Yeah, today's meeting is going to be very short. I am starting, I'll be sending out the application forms for Master Gardener training later on today. I just have a few more corrections and I have to block off some interview days on my calendar to put into the application form. Um, and once I do that, I'll be sending it out. So I'll be putting it up on Facebook. I'll be sending it out um, through other avenues as well so that um, I can get as many people in as I can. It's going to be a hybrid class where some of it will be in person if possible. And um, if not, I'll just stick with it being online. Um, because that's that's the way that it is for right now. Uh -huh. I'm choosing to do a class this year because next year I'm definitely not doing a class. Next year it's all about finishing my master's degree and my packet for tenure or permanent status is what it's called. So that's, that's what I'm doing next year. So this year I'm doing Master Gardener training. So if any of you want to join um, as, and help me teach, I would appreciate it. Nancy, you did a great job last year helping me out. You look like you forgot that you did that. My heavens. <laughs> Happy to help. So um, yeah, I would be really, really grateful. Quickly before Lori comes on, Lori did the best. You know what? She truly is a magnificent teacher. Hello, Susan. Hello, Nancy. Hi, Charlie. Hello, Nancy. Hey, Angelica. I saw you change the picture. It is so fantastic. Yes, you did a great job. Well, I'm trying. <laughs> yes, and that's, that's really all I ask. It really is. It's really all I ask. Um, and Mort put in the chat, hello, y'all. <laughs> That's what I say in the morning sometimes to my girlfriends. I'm like, hey, y'all. <laughs> and they send me virtual cups of coffee that way. <laughs> Thank you. So, who today? Who did what? Needed two cups today. Oh, I'm telling you. Oh. Yes. I'm going to have like my big mug <laughs> and it's going down. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm working on right now. I'm trying to get those application forms out so that I can um, schedule interviews and everything in time and order my books on time for whoever it is that signs up for my class this year. But next year, I'm definitely not doing a class. So when I discussed it with my boss, I was like, well, see, I was thinking about not doing one this year, but I'm definitely not doing one next year because my priorities will definitely have to be on permanent status and my master's degree, finishing those two things up next year. So that's just not going to work. <clears throat> Um, so any of you who want to help me teach the next group of Master Gardeners, um, please send me a little message and I will happily, happily get you all in to assist me. Um, and please don't think that you're not qualified. That's definitely not ever going to be something that I would want you all to think. Um, I'm usually present during all of the lessons. Um, and we do have PowerPoints. So you all can get the PowerPoints in advance. You can read them through, see what you know, find out what you don't know, right? And I'll share the handouts with you all and everything. So it's gonna basically be like what we do for Speakers Bureau. I can give you all the lectures and the handouts and then you'll be able to see the things for yourself 
and be able to say, oh, you know what? I can probably teach this and it'll be fine. And it's a really good refresher. It is. And then for those of you who feel like you've been out of contact and out of the loop for a while, and besides that, remember that we're not currently doing a lot of face-to-face -face things anyway, join the class. Definitely join the class. That way they'll see you and you'll see them. Um, it was fun. Julia joined in a couple of classes. Nancy was there for a couple of things. A few other volunteers jumped in on a couple of lessons. I know that Lee was in a couple of classes. So it makes a difference because then, because remember like, well, not last year, but the year before, my mission the year before was definitely that you all would be able to recognize one another at the grocery store, right? So we did a lot of meetings and get togethers and different things like that. Um, yes, you can use the Master Gardener classes as CEUs. Those are continuing it. They fully qualify. So then I actually got some emails like, oh, guess who I saw at the hardware store? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm, I don't know any people. And they tell me it's a fellow Master Gardener. I'm like, oh, yes, this is working. You know, so that's another thing, too. Our current um, new group has truly been shortchanged by the fact that they did not have the opportunities like my previous classes have had to be fully integrated, you know, and to be able to see people in the grocery store and get to know them. Hopefully that'll change by the end of this year. We'll be able to do more things together. We'll be able to get together more and we'll be able to get back into a more normal setting for the Master Gardener program. And then next year, while I am not doing the training, I will go back in and do the same thing, which is what my game plan was. I planned on doing like two or three um, Master Gardener classes and then skipping a year so that everybody could, we could just focus on who we have. All right, so this is kind of working out the way that I, I want it to. So next year is going to definitely be a, a team building year. All right, Nancy Madsen wants to know, have any on call today received the vaccine? Um, I know that there were a few people who I know, but I don't think any of them are master gardeners. I, I heard in my uh, class this morning that I go to that um, Dr. Cho, Dr. Nancy Cho, had the vaccine and all you had to do is call her office and make an appointment. You didn't even have to be her patient. Her husband is Dr. Perone, who's a local infectious disease guy. Okay. Interesting. And, and I know two people, one was over 80 and one was 79 who they weren't Nancy's patients, but they got the vaccine from her office. Okay. Well, that is definitely something for us to look into. And you said it's Dr. Nancy Cho. C-H-O. That's it. C-H-O. Nikki, have yes. they, um, have the, if they have ever been to Cleveland Clinic, they go into their my chart and they can make appointments online, which is how I got mine. Okay. So Susan, you did get your- One more. There are there none are, available. Yeah, from last week we um you we were on here discussed there, that. yes, but you need to try that through them like um tw twice a day just because oh, they will get it. just okay. randomly. It was ran on a lark. Oh, we got it. You don't, what, Nancy? You don't think they're going to get any more vaccine? Well, they haven't yet because I've been checking several times a day, like you said, and it keeps saying we will we we will let you know when we. When it's in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just think you need to continue to do that. And if you've yeah. ever been a patient in Cleveland Clinic, yeah. you need to make a my chart so that you can access yeah. that possibility. I, I have that. Also, yeah. other towns, Fort Pierce, you can sign up 
try and access them. You don't have to stay. It's a federal program. You don't have to stay, even in your own state. What were you saying, Mort? I had tried to sign up also, but it's, it seems like they would have a waiting list once you signed in, but they don't. They yes. uh, So at random, you just got to be luck of the draw. So which I think is a uh, little discombobulated, but I'm not on their staff, so. Wow, it's just... It's I tried this morning, too, and couldn't get in. Mm. And I saw, I saw my primary care Friday at Cleveland Clinic, and he said, did you get your shot? And I said, no, I've been trying. He said, well, we're having a big problem with people from out of state coming in, especially Michigan, Ohio, and New York, and all you need is an address uh, to get the shot. And so they use an uncle or aunt's address. So I said, well, they should ask for a Florida driver's license. And he said, yeah, well, they should do a lot of things, but this is Florida. We don't. Do so anything right. I, I think because it's a federal program, they can't deny anybody. I think uh, that's probably true. Yeah, that's why, probably do they, true. why do they allot the vaccine per state? They don't have but to. There have been uh, lots of complaints about Cleveland Clinic in general. Dr. Well, I listened to Ron DeSantis and what he said uh, that the government was doing it. Are, the states that are moving the vaccine are getting more vaccine. The states that are not moving the like. New York, they're not getting any more because they're not moving it out. So I think, uh, given the devil is due, I think Ron has um, is trying to whatever we get in, he moves it out. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Well, um, I am hoping that we will see the light at the end of this tunnel, and it won't be a bloody train at the. <laughs> and I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, that's why. I, that's why I can't recognize people in the grocery store because of their mask. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if they have a hat on. <laughs> yeah, I know you by your voice, more. <laughs> yeah, well, I can disguise my voice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, hopefully I have a gardening question. Okay. <laughs> Just because we're master gardeners. Uh, since we had all that rain in 2020, uh, I have new myrtles coming. Not crepe myrtles, the Florida myrtle. Wax myrtles. Wax myrtle. And I wonder if there's a special way to trim it. And also, I seem to be killing it when I trim it. Um, okay, so you shouldn't have, you shouldn't be trimming any new myrtles. Okay. Right now. Um, you want to, you want to do a trimming program for them, like when they're two years old, because then they're fully established and they can take the pressure. Oh, these are oh. old bushes. They just seem to be fluffing out because we had so much rain. Okay, so if they're older bushes then they shouldn't be too bad off, but remove anything that's dead first. Okay. And then look at your plant and say, now my up to 30% begins. And hopefully as long as you keep it under 30% of the, the living tissue being removed, it shouldn't have that much of a problem with you. Okay. But you need to water your plants before you prune them. <laughs> okay, that's my problem probably. It's not raining. Right, so it's it's in, in out where you should, where I'm imagining you have your myrtles, it's gonna be hard to water them first. So um, after a good rain, that's when you go out there to prune them if you want them pruned. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. They're not able to, cover their wounds all right so when we, when we cut them open they need to have the ability to push out the things that are the the chemicals that are going to cover those wounds for them it's just like when you get a good scrape 
And if you all remember, and I don't want to give you all an ouch moment, but whatever. If you all, when you all got a good scrape, you'll see that there's like this very clear sheen of liquid that comes up that begins your scab. That's what you're going to be hoping for in your plants as well. So you have to give it the moisture that it needs in order for it to be able to make that. So it can seal it off and it won't be like, ah, it's an emergency, I just got to die. <laughs> okay. Right? So that's that's what you're that's what you're missing. That's the ingredient that you're missing, I believe. So because I don't my are where there's no uh, sprinkler system. Right. So trim off your dead pieces, step back, look at it and say, my maximum is 30% of living tissue. Okay. And if you can avoid taking off that much at once, do. Okay. I want to know why you want to trim them back. They don't get to be too, too huge. No, it's just they're in an area where, strange as it may be, I have one level of shrubs and then another level and then my neighbor's 10 foot high areca palms. And so I wanted to keep that level thing going on. Oh, okay. Multi-level. In the, you know, out here in the woods, you know, I do have yeah. a, a landscaping plan. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> anyway. All right. Um, so we got a Christmas card from Tom Orr. Oh. Where he sent us season's greetings and a happy new year and everything. And he seems to be doing very well up there in the Carolinas. So yay for Tom. Um, let me see. I went and I dropped off goodies to Lois. I didn't get to see her because it was not visiting day and you know all of the other things. Um, but I am assured that she received them, so that's good. I'll be checking in with her again later on this week. Um, I got an email from Lee. California is, as we know, back into more of a lockdown situation. And she is doing her best to just keep to her little self and keep safe. But she's doing well. She passed a very good holiday and had a great time um, distancing visits from the daughters and whatnot. So we are quite happy that she's over there and she's doing well as well. Um, and to be honest, I think that's all that I have to tell you all today. Oh, um, we just got Angelica into the private Facebook group. Um, and I recommended our private Facebook group to her because there are times when she has pictures, beautiful pictures, and none of the two of us know what the hell it is she took a picture of. Wow. I don't know birds, and um, I'm pretty good at identifying plants that I already know. <laughs> and the rest of them, I take a good guess. I, I look at who I think the family should be and I try to track it down from there. Um, but yeah, so Angelica is going to be sharing pictures every now and then in the, in the the on the private Facebook page. Please keep an eye out for it and um, help her identify the birds and whatnot. And of course, those are things that you all could always just take from the page and share with someone who you might actually think knows the answer to. It's perfectly fine. Um, I'm just giving you all the heads up and um, we're continuing to share really, really good, really good information on our Facebook page, the public one. So remember to click the share button and just put it on your page as well so that we will get more feedback and we will get more people using the Master Gardener page. And again, it doesn't matter if all your best friends live in Timbuktu. My people are in Cayman and believe me when I tell you, I have like two of them that join me 
on my lectures um, when I give a class simply because of how similar some of our growing conditions happen to be. So don't think that your friends in Michigan can't say to themselves, eh, I might move down to Florida. They can grow tomatoes in the winter. You know, snowbirds eat fresh tomatoes all year round, it seems. So that's, that's the idea. All right, so access our Facebook page, share our content so that we actually get a lot of credit for it and it'll be great. Somebody was speaking? No, Nikki, I had a question though about the IC center. Um, IG that, center. Mm -hmm. that pot that we had with the three little alyssums in it. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't look that great this Saturday. So I'm going to pick it up. I just split some um, flapjack clancoe, which have a lot of red around the edge and don't take a lot of water and can take the sun. Now, how would you feel if I put some of them in with the alyssums? Uh, that would not be the best choice. Okay. Um, let me tell you one of the reasons why. I try my best to not put anything out there that people like me might take a piece of. And it ends up having unintended consequences. So I'm trying to make sure that everything we put out there, if, if we are providing for the thieves as well, what they steal won't be, won't be able to have a negative impact on the environment. And we don't want flapjack in the ground. Okay. All right, but I'm going to grab that pot. I'm going to stick some Gallardia into it because I have a ton load of it. And um, I'm also going to put some into the other pot because it's here. And I'll return both pots out there with the Gallardia in them. So that's my motivation for getting out of the house today. Um, and in a, about an hour or so when my headache medicine kicks in, I'm going to need to go somewhere. <laughs> ah! I've given up and I've given in and I've taken the drugs. All right. Um, I think that is it. You all continue to have patience. I know it is definitely not the best situation that we're in. So I'm not going to, to tell you all to have an unlimited fountain of, re, of, of patience, but just try to continue to have patience and continue to try to get your, to become vaccinated. Um, and just stay safe safe as possible. I mean, even when you have the vaccine, you still have to wear a mask. You still have to continue with um, some distance di distancing protocols and everything. So just try to think to yourself that the vaccine is just another layer of protection, all right, and try to get it. I am actively engaged in figuring out what resource I will be able to access in order to get it for myself. And then I'll have to schedule my days off for it after because I don't, I don't take shots very well. All right, um, you all have yourselves a lovely rest of the day. Um, for those of you who I'm supposed to be having tech days with, I think I was supposed to have one with you, Nancy. Yeah, I thought it was yesterday though. So I know it wasn't yesterday. I was under... <laughs> Four of my blankets out here in my recliner with my head just, I wanted to just do like this and put it to the side. <laughs> um, and it didn't help that I had um, conditioner in my hair. So I had to comb my hair last night, which is part of the reason why I cut it last night more. Because I was like, yeah, this is not going to work. I had the same problem. I know it's it's a tough life, sweetheart. It really, really is. Yeah. And it, and it felt so good. I was just like, take a twist. And y'all don't judge me for this, but I really did say to myself, my poor mama. If she saw me doing this, she would just be like, she's she's seen me just get up one time and just go, and she was like, Nikki. 
<laughs> you think I was killing her child. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, have a great one. All I right. am going to wait for my medicine to kick in and then I'll go be useful to myself and to others. So you are safari for an again. If I did what? This time I've been on safari for invasives again. This time rosary peas. Oh my <laughs> heavens. Where did you find all of those? On our pro on our community on common property. Really? Awesome. See you right there. Oh Hi, my Mark. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, is so awesome. Good so for you. you. Making mancalas with those? Is that what we're saving them for? No, I'm just saving them to show off. Who's that with a fan on? Oh right? wow! I'll bring them to the next board meeting and show everybody what our another one of our invasives to I'm look at for. See if you're gonna see those. Oh, that is so you need some air potatoes. I've got plenty. No, thank you. Okay. I still have more air potato bulbs, bubbles that I uh, picked up um, last weekend. Okay. I got some, the beetles, they just cleaned everything out. Really? Yeah. To get more beetles. Definitely need more beetles. I have one volunteer who says, well, they make the little holes in the leaves, but then they, <laughs> it's just not enough. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. Not lasting long enough. No. Hi, right, boy. So, Charlie. did anybody see the program on TV on Saturday morning about the air potato from the woman in Fort Pierce? She also was in the in the paper. She was written up in the newspaper. No. 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 Like, it was really Susan, good. Susan, you're you're the most retired person I know. Like yeah. you, you know all the events, <laughs> everything. You're the best. I read the paper. I can't I'm tell telling you. you, and you watch the TV, and you, you you're like the most retired person I I know. You're the it best. It was really good. I, I, it was in the newspaper about how it was, and she was there on TV and in the newspaper, and she was doing air potatoes and the bugs, and it was awesome. That sounds like a dream. You'll in have her white send, coat, her white lab coat. Oh, send it to me and I'll send it out. Maybe there's a link to the program. Okay, I'll look for it. It was, you know, I don't get the paper. I get it online. So I've got to go remember oh. what day. And But probably was Saturday because that's the day she did it. All right, I'll look for it. Cool. I will definitely look for it for you. Thank you. And then I have to figure out how to actually send it to you, which usually is take a <laughs> picture of my iPad and then send the picture of my iPad because I can't get it out off my iPad Press to you. The link really, really hard. Hold your hand on there. And when it shows the little thing that says share, you hit yeah. share. And then when it asks you how you want to share it, you say email and then buzzing. I'm All right. I just tried that this morning on a farming article to my son. So we'll see. Yeah. I'll try it again. He there you go. We're, we'll be in business shortly. Yes. All right, you all. Have yourselves a great day. Continue to stay safe. Remember to check in on somebody else if you haven't seen them for a while. And Charlie, please tell Carla that she is in our thoughts and prayers out there in the hospital. She's had her first shot. Good. Good. Yep. Yes. Yay. Be prioritized. Yes. That's good. I will. Say hi for you. All right. Thank uh, you. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye, bye. Bye. Bye for now. Figure out how to leave. Okay. <laughs> bye.